Hello again guys and welcome to a kind of disappointing video. Uh, so, I was supposed to have a very different video for this week, but uh, it was kind of a gamble because I, I was going somewhere, I was recording what I was going to find, and I found nothing. Uh, in fact, it was like the worst place I've ever been for trying to find movies. So... Uh, I just decided it wasn't worth it. It wasn't good content for you guys. And so I tried to find something else to do instead. And on the car ride home, I was kind of thinking, this might be a good idea. So I'm going to give it a run. I think I can actually get a few videos out of this, uh, even for like Halloween and Christmas. Um, so <clears throat> I got a sticky note as always. Uh, this time it's pink. And today we're going to be taking a look at some of my uh, film hot takes. So, today's just going to be a basic episode. Uh, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven here. And we're going to kind of break each of them down a little bit. Some of them are related to each other, some of them aren't. Uh, but before I get into this, if you disagree with what I have to say, and you feel like just going and storming off at me in the comments, don't, because I'm just going to delete your comment. I can do that. I'm just going to delete it, because I don't need that negativity, all right? If you agree with me, sound off. I'd love to hear, you know, what you have to say, as long as you're not berating my opinions, because that's what they are, opinions, all right? Also, by the way, for those saying I can't handle constructive criticism, because I know there's going to be somebody who's going to say something, uh, just trashing on my opinion is not constructive criticism. All right. All right, so the first one. Uh, I, I don't know if I've mentioned this before, uh, but uh, you guys should know this. I really don't like Marvel. <laughs> I hate Marvel, and I'm not just saying the new stuff. Some of the new stuff I like, like Quantumania. I liked Quantumania. I mean, I like all the Ant-Man movies, right? But that's where I basically draw the line. I don't like anything outside of Ant-Man. So, I, I, I don't like Marvel. And that's really it. I don't like superhero movies. I like Shazam. Shazam's cool. But I don't like anything really else other than Shazam... And man, and I guess Joker, if Joker counts as a superhero movie at that point. Um, I, I don't think I even have anything else on the shelf that would be considered superhero. Yeah, I don't like Marvel. Alright, and I especially hate Spider-Man with a burning, fiery passion. One of these videos you'll see me destroying Spider-Man in some capacity. Alright, a plushie, a figure, or something. You'll see, you'll see it happen in one of these videos, <laughs> all right? So just don't be so shocked when it happens, all right? Anyway, my next point, or my next thing is, uh, I, would, I, I would say all these are controversial, but I'd say this is a pretty controversial one. Um, I, I'm not too crazy about Indiana Jones, um... And if I had to pick, like, if I was on a deserted island and I had to pick, like, between Indiana Jones and National Treasure, the film series as a whole. So I have five movies versus two movies and a shitty TV show. But you can't be in here. This is the men's room. Well, excuse me for not being beholden to binary systems of oppression. The women's room is just down the hall. You don't want to get me started on the misogynistic placements of the female facilities, okay? But I had nothing to do with that decision. Oh, so since it wasn't your decision, you just get to ignore how gender stereotypes keep our society locked in a cycle of patriarchal advances? Bathroom is all yours. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, I would pick the National Treasure series. Um, I just love National Treasure. I mean, don't get me wrong. I like Indiana Jones. I have all five movies on 4K on my shelf. If that doesn't say I like Indiana Jones, I don't know what does. I even have a DVD set of Indiana Jones. I, I like Indiana Jones. I'm not saying I don't. 
But if I had to choose over the two, I would pick National Treasure all the way. Um, first of all, I, lo I love Nick Cage. But National Treasure feels more grounded, I guess. Uh, and it really... Part of what I don't like about movies like Star Wars, Dune, Avatar, um, like The Hobbit, all those movies is you really have to know about the worlds in order to get involved in it. And it kind of feels the same way with Indiana Jones, even though it's set in our world. You ha it feels like you have to have that background knowledge of the time era and whatever, you know, he's kind of chasing after, you know, it feels like there's kind of missing pieces that we should know about as an audience. So, I, I, I hate sounding like I'm critiquing the Indiana Jones series, which I'm not trying to do, but uh, it feels like I'm kind of clueless. I've only really seen each movie once or twice so, except for Dial of Destiny, which I've only seen once for sure. Um, but it just feels like there's missing context and I don't know. Um, whereas with National Treasure, uh, everything is very laid out. Uh, it's, it very much feels like a treasure hunt. So, I don't know. I, I, I guess I just like the setup of National Treasure more. I'm talking out of my ass for this whole video, so... But I just like National Treasure more. And it's also, uh, you kind of have that knowledge already. Uh, because you learn, especially if you're an American. Because you learn that stuff in like elementary school. Like, you know, like Ben Franklin. And you know all the names brought up, right? Um, you know, John Wilkes Booth in the second movie. He assassinated Lincoln. And, you know, you it, it toys around with, you know, some of these elements of the Freemasons and everything. So... I just I just think it's more fun and I really in, enjoy National Treasure. So please give us that 4K. Uh, another controversial one, uh, which this is gonna get all, these next three are gonna be fairly controversial. There, the next two are con are all Ghostbusters. Uh, so yeah, um, Ghostbusters Afterlife. I love Ghostbusters Afterlife. In fact, I like it more than the original. And a lot of people always say that they like the original over any sequel and i feel like that's a problem and we'll get to that in another video <laughs> um because i i do have a i have a couple videos planned for the future um and that's one of them so though the like speed of the film it, it's a very slow paced film um it, I, I just I just like it a lot more you know the whole uncovering your legacy kind of thing and element of discovery i really like that i love the small town the small town setting um and i really wish we could do more stuff like that in ghostbusters but i feel like one movie was enough at the same time and we should stick to new york because that's where that's what ghostbusters is it's part of uh, ghostbusters identity is new york um and somerville i think was a one-time thing in that you know they hit gold once and can't hit it again. Um, and I, I, I guess I like the whole, uh, you know, Goonies, Stranger Things, Super 8, whatever. Uh, kids discovering uh, small town, the whole thing that they did with it. And they put Ghostbusters in it. So, uh, and there's just a lot of sequences that I love in it. Um, as opposed to, like, the first movie, which... I mean, I've seen so many times, and, you know, it, it it's, doesn't change any of these times I watch it. Um, and there's also just such a level of craftsmanship with Afterlife, you know, a level of, like, effort that the first movie and, like, the second movie really can't have because they, wor they weren't trying to, you know, be a legacy sequel or appease, you know, the audience quite like Afterlife was. Um, and it's especially evident in the art book I have back there. Um, if that makes any sense. So, um, yeah. Not saying that the first two movies didn't have any effort put into that. So, don't take my words where they're not supposed to be taken. So, Alright, my next one tied to Ghostbusters is 
I actually really enjoyed the 2016 movie. And I think people just love to shit on it because of a couple reasons. It Some of the actors in it didn't, <laughs> didn't help um, with what they had to say. Uh, and that's kind of soured my taste a little bit. Uh, but mostly they didn't, they, they just took it as, oh, we're just gender swapping the movie. Um, the humor style is different. I, I totally get that. I mean, it's a very different humor style. Um, and actually, frankly, I would really like it to be canon as an entry if it were like Ghostbusters LA or something, but it's not. And so unfortunately, there we go. Um, it's a very SNL type movie and cause it uses SNL type humor. And so, I mean, a lot of my friends really enjoyed it. We did, we did a big watch party thing and they really enjoyed it. Some say that they enjoyed it over the original and cause I mean, it, it's made for a different audience really. Uh, so <laughs> I mean, I mean, I really enjoyed it. Um, I, of course I don't put it over the original, or even the second movie, or even Frozen Empire, or Afterlife, but for me, it's still at the bottom of the, of the series, but I don't hate it. I don't dislike it. I really do enjoy it. I just don't believe it's as bad as anybody says it is, so. Alright, on the topic of reboots, requels, and readaptations, I love those. Give me them. Just keep yucking them at me, Right? Um, except when they're Disney. I hate Disney <laughs> readaptations and sequels. Like, I'll take Inside Out too, but after that, we need to draw a line. We need to stop making sequels, guys. You need to make some original shit. Um, no, but seriously, I love Scream 5 and 6. I love Ghostbusters Afterlife, Frozen Empire. Those were great. <laughs> I mean, Frozen Empire could have been better, but, um, Halloween 2018 was really good. Um... Now, readaptations. The 20, uh, 2005 Charlie and the Chocolate Factory is amazing. Uh, I, I did enjoy the new Mean Girls. Um, actually, I, I haven't seen the original. Um, I just bought it. I just got it for the first time. Um, but Matilda, the new Matilda that just came out, which was a, an adaptation of the musical. I enjoyed that. I'm waiting on the U.S. physical media release. Like, come on, guys. Where is it? Um... But, you know, uh, Child's Play Reboot, I loved it. You know, I, I love, you know, when they take franchises and characters and new places and, and, and do new things with them. Um, I mean, I'm not liking what they're doing with Chucky right now. But, uh, you know, I, I like seeing that kind of stuff, right? Uh, taking them out of their, their sort of <coughs> comfort area, like what they do with Scream 6. They're putting, you know, Ghostface in the city, right? They did it in such a, an amazing way, and they made it grittier and all that. Um, and they, reboots, requels, sequels, and readaptations get such a bad rap nowadays because we get so many of them, right? And a lot of them just aren't good. Uh, I mean, the new Mission Impossible movie was great. Uh, I mean, Mission Impossible has been, just been getting better and better as the movies go on. So, I mean, keep giving them to us. Uh, but, yeah. So, it, it, it just comes between how much effort and craft is put in by the studios, I guess, really. And we're going to be doing a video about that. Alright, now this next one comes from me as a physical media collector, so I, a lot of people will agree with me on this outside of the physical media community, but uh, streaming's actually pretty great, um, but only to me for one reason, and that is it allows me to test movies before I go and I buy them, because movies aren't cheap anymore, like this Mean Girls was $21, that Matilda was $24, alright? Now those are, I mean, those are re-releases of, of classic movies, um, but, <coughs> sorry, yeah, uh, th those are re-releases though, um, but, you know, stream streaming services allow me to watch movies, test them, see if I like them, and then if I don't like them, I don't have to buy them. I saw the movie, I know that, you know, I don't like it, I have a lot of blind buys up here on the shelf, like, 
Uh, when I bought Evil Dead Rise, that was a blind buy. Hereditary was a blind buy for me. I didn't like it. Um, or, or I wasn't crazy about it. Escape from L.A. is a blind buy. I've had that for months. I've had that for probably a year now. And I still haven't watched it. So, uh, yeah. But, like, Hereditary. I, I actually got to go see that in theaters for the re-release. So, I mean, I, but I, that happened right after I bought it on disc. Uh, so, I, I mean, frankly, if I had waited a little longer, uh, maybe I would have saved myself some money. But, um, yeah, no. So, streaming services can be great, right? Uh, Hell or High Water. I probably would have bought that steelbook at Walmart. Um, but I, when I watched the movie, sorry, the dog stepping on an Amazon package. When I <coughs> bought that, or when I saw that movie on Netflix, uh, I just wasn't crazy about it. So, if I had bought that movie, that steelbook at Walmart, I would have wasted $34. So, streaming can be great, but it, usually, it should definitely not be your preferred way to be watching movies. Um, even if people, you know, vape at the theater and are on their phones. So, I got one last one. It's kind of, it's not so much a hot take, uh, but it is a, it's kind of a fact to me. Um, and that is that horror right now is the most progressive genre. Um, if you look at action and comedy, nothing crazy is happening. Uh, they've been in the basically the same spot that they've been in for years, right? Um, you know, especially action with the superhero genre. It's just been at that standstill, right? Where it's just it's just superhero movies and each one's got to get bigger than the next or than the last. So um, but with horror right now, you eating something? Hey, what are you eating? You really gotta do this shit? Um, with the horror genre, we see new types of movies all the time. Like, uh, we just got <coughs> uh, Late Night with the Devil. I haven't seen it, but it, it's for, it's set up like a talk show, Late Night Talk Show. Um, we get all these A24 movies, which are, like, weird. <laughs> just, just weird. That's all I'm going to say. Um, you know, we get uh, our, our standard line of movies, like, uh, you know, I guess the Halloween movies or the Scream movies, our franchise movies, right? Mm -hmm. But, you know, then we also get the, like, one-offs, like Lisa Frankenstein, which are, like, horror comedies. And, you know, action, it's a lot of just action comedies and action thrillers, and that's it. You don't get much else. So, uh, and maybe it's just because I don't watch action movies as much as I watch horror movies, or I'm not into it as much. So, I, 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 I don't really know the ins and outs of the action genre. But I just feel like horror is finally getting a chance to really shine and, and develop right now so i don't know but if, if you guys got anything to say about th that one let me know but <coughs> anyway guys thank you so much for watching my little hot takes list i do plan on doing a couple more of these once i think of some more um this video went out way longer than i anticipated it going on for so now i gotta edit it um sorry that it's probably out later than it was supposed to be uh so yeah, but anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you do agree with any of my takes, let me know. If you don't, don't let me know. Sound good? Good. All right, have a good one. Come on, Rex, let's go downstairs.